point can state that you can't search a room in your own home. You write the Constitution. There are no First Amendment rights inside your household. You can look in a jewelry box, a jewelry box of this nature, maybe a simple jewelry box, but if you look through it closely, you don't know what your child may be hiding. For instance, a gun could be hidden. When your child brings in his popular knapsack with many different locations, look through it to see what exactly is your child carrying in addition to a book. Something simple as a crack pipe, a used crack pipe. Behind a picture frame, you can find bullets. Just look and see what's inside your bookcases. It could be more than just books. Perfect place to hide uh, cocaine or other illegal substance inside the room. Something simple as a, as a baby doll. Could be just a baby doll, but also it could be a place where you can secrete or hide drugs. Holy shit. Who is this kid? El Chapo's long lost son? Yo, let me tell you something. If I went through my kid's bedroom and I found all that stuff, I would not confront them about it. Yeah, I'd go to my spouse like, yo, baby, we gotta move out of the house. As soon as he leaves, we move to another country. We start a new life. This kid is not playing. But if this video shows one thing about Eric Adams, it's that he is thorough as hell. I half expected him to be like, don't forget to look everywhere. Even a mayoral candidate can be a great place to hide drugs. Now, Eric Adams has been surging recently. And in part, this is because of his tough on crime approach, which is appealing in a city where shootings have soared 83% in the past year. But he's not the only threat to Yang. Former sanitation commissioner, Catherine Garcia, just received the endorsement of the New York Times. And comptroller, Scott Stringer, has been in the mix until recently when he was accused of sexual misconduct, which could hurt his mayoral campaign. But the good news for him is that'll definitely qualify him to be governor. And what makes the race even more unpredictable than usual is that this will be the first time New York City uses ranked choice voting, right? Which means that instead of voting for just your favorite candidate, voters can rank up to five candidates in order of preference. The question is, do New Yorkers even know five candidates? Well, we sent Michael Costa out into the streets to find out. Ranked choice voting is how New Yorkers will pick their next mayor. So I hit the streets to see what they think about this exciting new way to vote. Are you familiar with ranked choice voting? Yes. You think this is a good idea for New York to try this? I think it's great. And you're familiar then that for the first time ever, there'll be ranked choice voting. I am familiar with that, yes. Okay. And how many of those votes do you get? Oh, three. Three, sure. <laughs> I think the answer is five. The answer five? is five. Okay. Well, they basically understand ranked choice voting and they love it. So picking their top five candidates should be a breeze. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll start with number five. Let me see. We've been out about three and a half minutes now. Cameron's still unsure of who's gonna be in his top five. Is this timed? Am it I should be timed? timed. The next one's gonna be, I'll tell you that okay. much. So, okay, top five. Let's go with our number one top pick. Okay. Do I have to start a stopwatch, Susan? No, you don't. Okay. Uh, number two, Louie, you are two, really Louis. taking your time here. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm taking my time. Cameron, I want to thank you for your ranked choice voting, even though you somehow you put six candidates in five slots. You're welcome. So it took a little time to get going. At least once voters considered the candidates, they had good reasons for selecting them. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Everybody wants to be a major. Okay. Hold on now. He's not going to win. Why'd you pick him? I like both his name and his last name. His name and his last name. <laughs> Got it. And tell me why you went with Catherine A. Garcia, the queen of garbage. The look in her eyes. The look in her eyes. Is this the first time you're seeing and hearing this name? Oh, wholesale. 100%. Okay, I'm familiar with Andrew Yang. How do you know Andrew Yang? $1,000 a month, bro. You owe me that. You owe... <laughs> I can't wait. Some people should not be here. Who's that, Chaka? This dude. Why should he not be there? Julie? Yeah. He gotta go, man. He's, He's gotta, gotta go. Okay, you don't have to put him in your top no, five. No, the, the bottom feet need to be white hands, man. Susan, how does it feel to finalize your ranked choice voting ballot? Feels adequate. Adequate? Yeah. How was this experience for you? It was adequate. Adequate. It looks like ranked choice voting will be tough for some this upcoming election, but at least there's one candidate all New Yorkers could agree on. I'll give it to Costa. Costa takes number five, which means I'm on the board. Oh, you're the one. And number five, I will be picking 
Your face. My face. <laughs> I'm putting you in. Just me. For you. Oh, that is me. What's it say there? What's the name? What the is hottie it? with the body. Oh, well, thank you. You didn't have to say that, Helene. No, I didn't. It said it there.